Welcome back, party people. Adventure begins now. Got the van packed up and we're gonna to head to the campsite. Forgot one thing. It's gonna get a little chilly tonight. It's about this is gonna come in handy. See you in two and a half hours. Also, I know it's a little dark in here, but I forgot to mention we are going to try out the Pro Hero 8 tomorrow. All right, we got our first pit stop here. I'm in strange territory. Said I loved you, but I lied. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Here we got our battery in there charging already. Let's go. Psh. Come on, Virginia. For real. Get with the program. <laughs> Alrighty, we made it. And instead of doing two and a half hours, I did a little over three hours. So we're at our campsite and it is a cool 32 degrees. Not too bad. I probably need an air conditioner tonight, not a heater. Anyhow, I'm going to get some sleep tomorrow. We're getting up bright and early and I'll show you exactly where I'm at. Can't forget your furry slippers when it's cool outside. By the way, I ain't afraid of no ghost. But if you are, you know who to call. Good night, John boy. Good night, Elizabeth. We made it. If you don't believe this place is popular, check it out. It's 8.15. All right. A ton of people here. A ton of people. Look how full the parking lot is. Crazy. And we're going. You can tell the white blazes means we're on the Appalachian Trail. So McAfee's Knob is just a short hike about four miles from the trailhead here on the Appalachian Trail. And I am probably going to take the Appalachian Trail up and probably the fire road down because I don't know if you've seen it. You've seen it. And it's just quicker to come down the fire road. I fully expect I'll be taking some layer of clothes off, but. I brought extra in case something happens and I get stuck out here or somebody else gets stuck. So this is the fire road. I don't want to take that. I want to go on the AT. So don't make that mistake. We'll be coming down there. We're on the right track. Been doing some hiking and trail running lately. I can tell you though, I don't know how how the trekking poles are gonna fare with my uh, This is going to be interesting. We shall see. Get this bad babies adjusted to the right height.
Might take this coat off here shortly. So I've never, I've never hiked the complete Appalachian Trail. Not, more of a trail runner than a hiker, but friends like a hike, so that's good too. It's a break from the norm. How leaves falling. Feels like uh, somebody's kind of behind you. Springer Mountain, Georgia is southern terminus. Katahdin in Maine this is northern. I've done sections in quite a few states. Never to complete. Maybe one day. I don't know. I kind of like camping in the van. But I could see in the uh, warmer months that being pretty fun. Hope you got a chance to check out my uh, silly video I did at Hanging Rock last week. It's kind of fun little hike. Put some uh, unusual animals in there. Just playing around, doing something a little different. Got some good rock shear up here. I don't really find trekking poles much use climbing. They kind of get in the way. But to make a good third leg, check that out. They make a good third leg. You're crossing bridges or streams and going down makes it easier. I think on the that jarring you get in your knees sometimes. So I expect a full house up here on the top. So I doubt I'll be able to get pictures without any people in it. Judging by the line. I saw it at the parking lot. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Some good mountain bike content coming. I always like to take the winter time to learn a new skill or kind of go back and perfect some existing ones. Bunny hops and jumps are next. And if I can find a couple places down in Florida 
or southern Georgia to boondock I'll get some practice in some uh, warmer weather we'll see I would like to do the full AT and the PCT and the CDT, but it just takes so much time. noticed in the intro I went and got a little little buddy heater the round one and it puts out you know a fair amount of heat it's not gonna warm up the space really quickly but it felt good standing near it this morning warm my clothes up and stuff so that was pretty cool I'll probably end up doing a longer term review on it. And also with this GoPro Hero 8. I'm trying to get rid of riding with the gimbal. It's one of the famous Appalachian Trail shelters over to the right or lean to or whatever you want to call it. I usually try to stay away from those things during the summer months because the mice are so bad and the rats. So, but There's an AT guide that kind of points out all the, the major, where all the major shelters are. If you've ever asked yourself why trekking poles, even just on a flat surface like this. You can walk so much faster because you're pushing off. I've already passed a lot of people that started a ways in front of me. but I was a non-believer at once too some inclines to pull help like this you can kind of grab top I have them extended a little bit further than I normally would just for extra leverage on the downhill are fogging up must have went in turbo mode we'll stop up here take off a layer and 
I start the GoPros running. More white blazes there on the tree. So you know, if you're on the, the right trail, now I'm gonna have to leave the direction north or south up to you. But our direction's already predetermined for us. There's some things that I do that probably a lot of people do, but I'll just share them with you. If I go exploring off trail, I make sure that I make a mark, sticks, branch, pointing you in a direction that I should be going. Because it may sound silly, but at some point it kind of starts to all look the same and you want to make sure you're headed in the right direction otherwise you're going to be in for a long day and maybe night kind of wishing I had brought my shorts with me I knew I was going to warm up, but I should have packed them in my pack. But maybe I did. I don't know how to check. Beautiful day. Glasses are all fogged up. <laughs> Beautiful countryside down there. All right, so just did a layer, layer change. Took off my uh, my wind layer, starting to sweat. So, all right, I'm gonna head back up. My GPS says half a mile, and that's got to be a mile and a half. So we've already gone a mile and a half. So. Uh, yeah we'll get back to it check out the uh the view see if i can get one behind me and i'll start to go up and i'll probably have to stop up there and uh put a new battery in it but uh sweet let's continue moving on starting to warm up pretty good might even have to unzip this uh base layer here but let's get going <laughs> And the great thing the other great thing about these trekking poles is is that you know the handles are there to kind of rest your hands on but the straps are super important and if you put your hands through the straps you can bear almost all of your weight on the straps and the handles are just there to kind of guide there's a right and wrong way to use the straps i don't know which way i'm doing it I hear it can hurt your wrist pretty badly if you fall. So, might want to check on that someday. So, I waited a little bit too long to take my base layer off for my uh, wind jacket because it's already had a good sweat going. And that is a no-no, but it's not cold enough out here to even matter. But that's something you have to pay attention to for sure.
There's a lot of uh, AT hikers, Appalachian Trail hikers on YouTube. I kind of check in periodically, see how people are doing on their through hikes. And just general warnings and stuff. I mean, trick and poles are kind of awkward when you start out with them because they're just awkward. You probably hit your leg with them. Hit your foot with them. Part of the game. I don't hike enough with trekking poles to be good at it. So there you go. The more you know. Doo, doo, doo. After school special. Let me know if you're a mountain biker and you hike too. See, spots on the trail like this is just kind of more than one way to go. Could have went on the bottom there. But like some adventure spots like this you have to be kind of worried about so slide off the side hazy kind of like a blue haze out there Check that out. gloves off before long too. You can kind of push yourself up with these trekking poles too so You kind of keep them more to your side and uh, I think a lot of people hike up for the sunrise and I'm guessing a lot of people camped in the parking lot overnight. Judging by how many people were there when I got there. So, if you're coming on the weekend, it'd 
be weary of that. McAfee's knob, I guess the nearest small town would be Catawba, Virginia, I guess. Somebody correct me, correct the mundo if I'm a wrongo. which is not too far from Roanoke, Virginia. And it was quite a fun little night drive last night up here through, uh, through the foothills. And you go just by the Blue Ridge Parkway This is where trek and poles shine right here to me. Yep, I thought so. Somebody slipped. Bottom one. Just to reduce that knee chatter. when you're trying to send at a controlled pace. It's not that steep here, by the way, but I'm just saying. So you're gonna try to put a bunch of miles in every day. Might as well try to preserve what you can. Have another shelter off to the right and if I recall the last time we didn't make it to the top something happened I think the hiker that I was with started getting some hot spots on her feet and uh, I think we ended up turning around about a half a mile on the other side of this shelter so we're going to full beans today. This is giving her the beans. We'll stop up here and do a battery check, but you can see it off in the distance over there. Morning. Morning. Like I said, there's a fire road that goes down. We're just gonna take the fire road down. I got other things I wanna try to get in today too before I head near Grayson Highlands. It's 
so and my John Brown coffee maker didn't work this morning had one of those mini Keurigs and it kept shutting off the inverter and there's plenty of power I was 100% state of charge although I did one trick I use if I've got plenty of uh, battery is the shelter there so if you've ever wondered what one of these things look like inside bare bones basically and at the peak of the season there'll be tents all around this because there's a lot of scenarios get a bunch of people in a small room like that to get good sleep a lot of bodily noises going on if you know what I mean I'm just saying got a little fire pit there nobody's in here today but in the peak that's what one of them look like this one has a two night camping restriction limit this is the Catawba shelter elevation is 2460 feet looks like they got some kind of bare canisters and but you got a hike to do so let's continue on as I was saying my coffee maker failed or something's going on with the inverter I don't know one of the tricks I use when I know I have a lot of juice battery stored up that is I'll just microwave a bowl of water and uh, that's my warm water campsite what does this one say VA 311 2 miles 2 point it says 2 point something so I guess we've gone 2 miles we've got another 2 to go then but yeah I'll microwave that water I'll mix it with some cold water wash up wash my face and uh, just a way, another way to get warm water instead of using propane I only recommend doing that if you've got good juice in your uh, batteries because Even the smallest microwave is probably gonna utilize a thousand watts or peak even a little bit higher, maybe 11 to 1200, and then potentially. And I have a very small microwave, but that's what I did this morning. Felt good. And I turned the little buddy on for, I guess it was about 30 minutes while I sat there and dressed and washed up. McAfee Snob Tinker Cliffs. So we got to make a turn here. 1.5 miles. So there you go. I usually carry a couple of propane cylinders with me for cooking or maybe for heating. It's gonna be out. I don't live in the van, but when it's cold like this, I, I like to come out for a period of time. 
is just refreshing and it's kind of like getting an ice bath and a hot it's therapeutic in some way so there we go I'm gonna stop and check the camera here all right we're still good got about an hour of memory left I'm not doing 4k or 2.7 just doing the basics right now just to see if it's good enough of an equivalent to the hero 4 and uh, the intent and purpose is to do away with gimbal riding stop for a battery change about an hour and ten minutes on that battery not too bad There at the fire road. Crossing over, so we'll take the fire road back down. three miles to our destination We just crossed over the fire road that we're going to be taking back down. Might even jog back down it. We'll see. Signs said 1.3 miles to the overlook. a part two to the suspension tuning video the first one was dampers demystified so how to tune to control the speed of compression and the speed of rebound And then we're going to take 2019 Bronson, 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson, 
These are uh, water bars all along the trail. Some are dug and lined with wood. Some are kind of naturally cut out from the rocks. Some of them are rocks are set like this one. In an effort to control erosion and the water runs kind of straight down it'll wash out the trail and a path in no time Which is also why trails are built with a natural off camber to help shed the water as well. Doesn't matter if it's truck. OHV, ATV, UTV, hiking trails, biking trails. They will almost always have a camber towards the downslope of the mountain. So, that's just a something you have to reckon with. do get a flat place in the trail and consider yourself lucky I am in my Adidas trail runners hate hiking in boots and I got darn tough socks on to help minimize those hot spots it's not a commercial but anything over 8 to 10 miles or around eight to 10 miles. Sometimes I might start developing the hot spot, especially depending on how rocky it is or how much downhill's involved because my foot tends to slide in the shoe a little more. So I make sure I have them tight enough, the laces. But the one thing you got to make sure is your feet will swell as you walk more. And you may have to stop and loosen those laces. One of the things I'll do when I'm walking on a trail like this with trekking poles is I'll dial back the length of one of the trekking poles to make it just a tad shorter. And that's usually the side that's facing the slope of the mountain, the upslope. Because like I said, most all trails are, Or camber toward the downslope. So in an attempt not to walk with one leg shorter than the other. 
I'll shorten the left one up here on this particular hike. We still got the white blazes denoting we are on the Appalachian Trail. Coming up on the power line cut out. Which is pretty typical. Gotta get the power to those residents. And businesses. Businesses. Quick little water break. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, take my gloves off. A little hot. Just a little hot. Three miles forty. So about another six tenths of a mile. Morning.
So this is what you're in for if you want to hike the AT. And this is, I would say, probably an easy section compared to some. Not that I've hiked at all, but the elevation gain is relatively moderate. Missions. We'll see some more of those if I remember correctly on the fire road back down. There's a couple of rock caves. carbon tips on this thing trekking poles the old plastic ones it's not gripping too great not too far from the top I'm gonna take a guess Comment down below. How many people are up here? I'm gonna say at least 30. Maybe more. people made it to the top.
right, I started to sit down and uh, so I've already made it down to the power line cut out. So I just stopped here at this overlook. You can see down into this little overhang here. A bit colder going down because you're not uh, using as much muscle. We'll continue down. I've been walking on this fire road now for about, I'd say almost three quarters of a mile heading down. I think there's a couple of natural stone caves up here. I'll stop it. So I'll pick you guys up. And then I get there. Alright. I think we got about another two miles to go. Maybe one and three quarters. But I uh, found this little overlook. Pretty steep down there. Bunch of rock formations. Nice view of the valley. Oh baby folks, we're here at the rock cave. Yeah, check it out. Don't let that fall on your head, okay? And we go down here. It's a kind of shaky. There's a little staircase up in there. Oh, we look how far it goes up. Man. Any bears? Hello, hello, bear. All right, let's try this. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Here, fishy, fishy. No fishy. No giraffes. Huh? That's crazy. Check it out. Sun is coming out. Warming up a little bit. It's crazy rock formations. Whoop, whoop. We came from up there. We we're going down there. And bam! Trail kiosk. So where you top off your prepaid minutes, charge your cell phone. Psych. You didn't think that was edge. Come on. Not out of here. Alright. Pick you guys back up at the parking lot. Alright, so we just uh, we came down the fire road there and now we're re- Connecting back to the Appalachian Trail. Headed back down to the parking lot. Hip, 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 ho. Hooray. And we'll be there. Look, it's right there behind me. See it? See it? Right over there. Somebody trusts me a lot. I mean, a lot. We thought there were a lot of cars here this morning when I left. Check this out. Probably one of the most popular and most photographed places on the Appalachian Trail. At least down this way. I mean, cars are everywhere. I'm just glad somebody didn't park in front of me there. That's all I got to say about that. And that concludes McAfee Knob Hike. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Till next time, skill up and ride. And up and go.